Hey everybody, Z Furley here. It's been a while, just been busy with work and everything, and had to take a bit of a break from Smite. But I'm back, and uh, mainly because I got, I'm really excited for this new, god, Cleona. She is a new <clears throat> assassin coming to Smite, and we haven't had a really good, fun, at least for me, fun assassin for a while for the jungle. And I could... And I'm very happy to say that this one is really fun. She is a very fun and interesting god. And today I wanted to go over her kit, some nuances with the kit, what you can do with it, and a build that I like to do with her. Got a bunch of practice on the PTS so far. And yeah, let's dive right into it. First, her, um, her passive. Basically, you can just, you know... If you guys saw the patch notes or whatnot, or read about her, it gives her the ability to walk through walls. It takes about like a good second or so. So, one, two. So, almost two seconds to go into a wall. And once you're in a wall, you can move as you want. Like right there, there's invisible wall, so I can't go any farther. But you notice that you're taking increased tick damage during the duration of this. And... If you take too much or would be killed, you just get instantly kicked out before you would die. So you being in a wall will never fully kill you. It will just get you really low so anything afterwards is going to kill you. So you can use it to hide a bit, though enemies that are around you are going to know you're there because of a little icon they get and they can hear you kind of creepy music playing in the, in the background and whatnot. They'll know you're there around, but you could kind of play around that a bit if you really need to escape someone or like not attack someone, but just get away from them. Because you can see, as you can see here, I'm going to also turn on um, God mode so I can stay in the wall. As you can see, enemies from a certain distance start to appear in the wall. See? Like, I think it's about... I want to say 60 units or so. Maybe more. You'll see a lot of units around there. I mean, like, a, you get a good distance. You can see minions, you can see enemy gods and towers and phoenixes and jungle camps and jungle bosses you can see while in a wall like this so if i go over to here some i guess you can't really pop out of that wall there for some reason so if i go over to gold fury and once the again you have a 16 second cooldown so you can't just jump from in a wall into another wall that probably would be a little too much but if i'm in this wall Oh, I guess I can't go into that wall. I can go into this wall for some reason. Um, yeah, you can see Gold Fury and Fire Giant. And pretty much any wall, most walls you can go into. I haven't really... Uh, the only walls you cannot go into are walls that are out of bounds walls. So I believe I should not be able to go through this one in the jungle, ca jungle practice. Yep, see, because that is out of bounds. So you cannot go through that wall, the walls out of bounds. So this will make her harder to use in game modes like um, Arena, which only has a few walls in the middle. And um, <clears throat> Assault is going to be her probably her weakest mode to use the passive on. Because there are like most of the walls in there you can't use. But... Um, being in the wall, you can move around, you can hide, people know that you're there, though, but it makes them some fantastic ganking material. Um, <clears throat> well, another thing with it is anytime you're in a wall, or five seconds after you leave a wall, <clears throat> sorry, um, you get 10% um, bonus physical life steal. Which, for this guide, is great because you are physical, are physical ability focused. It's, yeah, it's physical ability lifesteal you gain. And she is very ability focused. You mean, her autos are not bad. See, 55, 82. So it's 55, 55, 82. So about 1 to 1 to 
Um, about one and a half, 1.5 or so. Let me check and see if it says exactly so. One, one, 1. 1.5, like I thought. And it's not bad. You can use your autos. It's actually really good for clearing and stuff. She has some pretty strong autos. But most of your damage is going to be coming from your abilities. So that's good to know. After you pop out of a wall, you have your life steal. <clears throat> anyway, ability one. It is a small cone that ticks three times. You're immune to knockups, and you deafen and silence them for about one and a half seconds. Not bad at all for ganking someone. You want to usually try to, because it's only like it's, it's a channel, and the silence doesn't come out to the end. So you want to try to use it before. Someone tries to dash away. So maybe like pop up from behind with your dash and then scream at them before they can get out. But it is a little tricky because it is if they're juking you very close, it's you might be not the easiest thing to hit because of that small area. You kind of want to stay to like mid. Like you don't want to be right in their face, I've noticed with her. Because if they like this and they're like moving around, it's not the easiest to stay up. I mean, it's possible, but if they're really good at juking, you might hit that, miss that last tick. And then that's the main burst of your damage is that last tick. Now, as I said, it's not the best thing. So see, like I'm barely hitting these two Odins at that distance. But if I'm in a wall, I get a huge cone. And it goes against the wall, so even if I'm not, like, if I'm looking over that way, it doesn't angle it. Its face stays along the wall. So, whatever the wall direction is, is how that will face. And it's much larger. And honestly, it looks really cool. Look at that face. This is probably one of my favorite things about her, that face. Granted, I don't think you would be... I haven't been using it in the wall as much unless I'm trying to, like, I'm sneaking by an enemy near, under their tower and I want some free damage. I go into a wall and scream at them through the wall when they're under tower. That is the main time I use the wall scream. Under tower or if there's a big group up in the jungle and I'm sneaking through, I do that. Otherwise, I do other things. I don't use it when I'm out of the wall. Another good thing, again, with its size, it might be better at some times to start with the wall scream because they won't know you're about to do it and you'll have a much easier time getting that silence off. So you can go like this, come out, and start attacking, or dash out, which I'll show in a bit. And I believe, I'm just going to confirm, that you can start the scream and still come out while it's screaming so you can um so if i do this oh, i messed up going i guess i couldn't come out though it might have been i was coming out where the face was let me just try that one more time just to make sure because <clears throat> i think if if you're able to come out with the scream while the scream's still going, you might get some interesting stuff. So if I go like this. Yeah, you can come out while still screaming as long as the face is not in the way. Probably best to do it with the dash, which I'll go over in a bit. But that's our thing. Very nice, quick, lots of damage. You're going to be leveling this up first. It's your best clear for sure in the jungle and does a lot of damage. And like I said, you're immune to knock up, so you. You can be silenced and you could be stunned, but you cannot be knocked up. The second ability is a line shot that stops on any tar any target. So any target wall minions minions will stop it too, as you can see. So before you ask, nope, she cannot clear a wave with this. This is why I think she might not be the best uh, laner. Well, like, like if you want to off, put her in an off roll, she's going to have some terrible um, lane clear because of that. Because her one has some really bad, um, really bad, uh, you cannot hit a whole wave at all 
with it. Even if you're like this, like on the side, you cannot do it. Hard, very hard to show you, but yeah. You cannot hit a full wave with a one. Only way to do it is with a dash, which is very risky. Especially early game, you didn't. That's why I don't think she's going to be a very good um, lane god. She's really going to do the best in the jungle. Anyway, um, let's see, her two. Like I said, it's a lane, it's a targeted shot. Does it and explodes in an area. If it hits something. When you hit something, explodes, you see, you become stealth. You get a big, decently sized movement speed buff. Sorry. Decently sized movement speed buff there. And let's see. Where are you? Wait, I'm in the wrong thing. I'm in it. So yeah, you get a 40% movement speed buff. So, you are very fast for a good amount of time. Like, um, let me just make sure. Duration. Doesn't say, does it? Four seconds. A four second uh, move, 40% movement speed, and you're invisible during it. Unless you attack. If you start attacking or hit, your, your stealth fades away for a bit. And that's that's that. Yes, yeah, it fades away, but then comes right back. So you, it's like a Loki stealth in a sense, in that sense. Like, it cannot be ended early. It can be visible for a second, but it never ends early by being CC'd or whatnot. Definitely good. I mean, the damage is decent on it, especially late game. But I feel like this is the one you're going to be leveling last. Yeah, getting more movement speed is very nice. But I don't think you need that movement speed as much early. You can live with the just a 20% for most of the game and be fine because you have a dash too. And you could go through walls to catch people. So yeah, you, the movement speed and damage isn't as needed. Her three is what I feel is the best thing to level up second. I mean, yeah, second. Her dash. As you can see, it's just a line cone and go through. But there are some nice things about this. What one you can do like this and then turn yourself. You will still go in the direction you started. You can't turn your dash. You just turn where the ending strike is going to be, which is very nice and kind of cool. You also can end it early if you want. So the fastest you can do is like that. At least that's the fastest I can do it. And if you could quickly turn your mouse around, you can slice like that. I do find sometimes though with lag or ping that you might miss if you turn too fast or end too fast in the like like. Like, if you turn it at the very last second really fast, you might miss what you where you're actually aiming. See, like that, I just barely missed it, almost hit him. Well, I hit him, but still, the timing is not the best here on this. But, so you just want to be careful with that. If you're flicking to do a very fast turn, you might over-flick your target. Now, <clears throat> as for how far this goes... It's interesting. Normally, if you're at, uh, anywhere, you're close to around just over 30. You travel, and the dash did the attack did not hit that Odin, I believe. Just make sure. Okay, it just barely hit that one Odin. But now, if you do it in a wall, I went farther and hit the second Odin. Now, so I went about 10, about 10 units farther, which is pretty nice, and you let you catch some targets. One thing, uh, one interesting thing to note here, let's see if I can actually do it. The dash of it doesn't count until you, doesn't start counting until you leave, so you can do that. You can be pretty far away from the end of the wall, and then dash out. And that's going to be where you would be actually dash. It would start doing your dash distance from there. So let's see if I can. There's a set limit where how far you can be until it starts to count. So like there. It zipped me to the end of the wall. 
and then did my longer dash. Which is a good thing to know. You don't have to be right next to the wall. And it could get you through kind of thicker walls or longer walls kind of faster doing it that way. If you're trying to escape or catch someone that's on the, you know is all the way on the other side of the wall. You could catch your, your three sooner than the edge of the wall to instantly go a lot faster. The damage is actually really nice, and this is how I'm, I've been mostly using my engage. I've been going in, coming out of walls with this to engage on someone. Um, it's a very nice way to catch them. Another thing we can do is... I forgot to cancel that out, but um, you can start your scream. There seems to be like a delay before you can cast the next ability. But the ability, the screamer can still be going as you exit the wall and dash out. You just have to make sure you cancel it pretty fast. You actually can go like this even too. I've, you can be all the way over here. And then do like that. There are not many walls in, in uh, some mode. You could do, that would be a very interesting thing to do. You're kind of far away. You use your scream to hit the wall. Then you dash out, turn, <laughs> slap him. And you don't have to be right next to the wall to do that. A nice little touch. I like that a lot. It gives you some more free movement. And, um, yeah, it's very nice. It lets you go into the wall and start attacking to the far side of the wall right away if you need to. And the last <clears throat> is her fourth ability. Uh, um, which is basically like, think like a raw snipe in a sense. Like, it's a line AoE, it's a line shot that also does an initial burst of damage and then a whole lot of mini shots afterwards that do a slow. It has a bit of a wind-up, as you can tell, but it lasts a long time. It lasts, I'm going to say it lasts as long as I'll push ult, just in a tiny corner, in a tiny line. Which is easy, like as you can see, you got a bit like a half second or so wind up. So you might miss. It might be hard to always hit, but the damage is really good. This is a, probably the great zoning tool. But you can see the slow this thing has. And it lasts a long time too. That Odin is really slow. And it lasts a long time. But now the best part of this um, um, alt is if you use it in a wall. You just leave a little trap. that You don't have to be there. And it's going to activate as soon as something comes close. Thing is, it's anything. It's not just gods can activate it. Minions and jungle camps can activate it too, as you'll see in a bit. Because I was trying, um, one time I was trying to, um, god damn, I can't actually go in that wall. Yeah, that can't go in that wall. I was trying to leave a trap, like, in the, in a, in a, in a lane, or by the speed camp. But you couldn't because enemies, the minions will activate it. So if I do like this, see, minions are activating it. I mean, you can still do it. It definitely is a very good um, zoning tool. And especially if you know an enemy is very good at being at his buff camp. As it spawns, you can leave the trap there. To do some major damage to them as they wait for their camp. Otherwise, I kind of like to leave it around their camps. Like in different spots that are like um, nice um, um, tra um, choke points in Conquest. There's quite a few like the mid lane, between lanes, stuff like that. You want to make sure though, when you're doing it... You want to always look for the best spot. So, like, nothing like that would not be good. You might want to go with something like that where you cut off a whole part of it. Or you want to, like, hit a few, like, lanes areas. Things like that. There's some really good spots you can put it. Oh, 
And yeah, you can't leave it next to a fire giant or whatnot. Because it would activate as soon as you drop it. But, one interesting thing you can do she could probably be a very good <clears throat> objective stealer because you could just go into the wall from the opposite side and then just you have free reign to like steal it as if you wanted to she has some really really good easy objective steal that no one that they can't punish you for it you just go into the wall do it as you see it kind of low. You can still see the health of the target. So you know when to drop it. It's actually really nice. Um, another thing to note with her wall traps. Is um, normally with a normal. You just use it. It activates right away. So, But you can, you can drop two at once if you so wanted to. It'd be, again that would be very good for secure of stealing or whatnot. You can go like this. Two at once, that's really good for some fire giant damage or gold fury secure if you need to. In the walls though, you can have up to three out at once. Let's see. So one, two, do, do, waiting for the third the one of X one to come in. There you go. Open. You can have three out at once. As you can see, if I drop one more. The first one I drop disappears. So you can only have three out at once. It's kind of like Arachne's web at once. That you can only have three out at once. And if you drop a fourth, the first one disappears. And that and they stay here indefinitely. As uh, well, as long I've, I have not seen it auto disappear through time planet. They will stay there until something triggers it, or you have more than three um, portals out at once, and then it will vanish. So these are really good, I find, at just um, if while you're traveling through the jungle, go into a wall and drop a we uh, drop a portal or two. It's that. I think that's a good way of doing it if you know you're not going to be using your portal for the so however seconds and you're not wasting the charges. Just drop a portal here, drop a portal there, use it in a fight. Definitely lay these around in the jungle as traps or even just point them in the middle of lane. So then you could drop them in the lane, drop them by the tower. You know the enemy's going to come through maybe. Even if the minions might activate it, boom, you got some free XP there. Um, yeah, uh, that's why I find you don't want to sit on your portal charges, your old charges. You want to use them as you can, as soon as you can usually, so you're not wasting them. Cause it's, it's free damage. Free damage is always nice. And the last, we're going to go over the build that I've been liking so far. It's pretty straightforward, a very normal, straightforward assassin um, ability assassin build. Though, I've been starting with Bumbas. She has really good clear. That's enough sustain with her, especially with to get the next item. And I always upgrade it to Bumbas Spear. Because uh, you really don't really need Hammer. I think the cooldown's a bit overkill. I like the extra damage this one gives. It gives some free penetration as well. And um, yeah, and I like the passive a lot because you, you're going to get 10% power buff for 30 seconds when you're traveling through the jungle to your target. And you get free damage, free killing. Very nice. I like this buff, this damage. She's not a. She's, her cooldowns are not long enough. I'm not short enough to really abuse Bumba's hammer too much. That's why, but that's why I like Bumba's spear on her more. First item I always seem to like. To, I like to grab, get a Jotun's wrath. Very fast, very quick. Um, ten, um, twenty percent. Um, um, life steal. I'm well, not life steal. Twenty percent um cooldown reduction. Very nice. She's very. She wants as much cooldown reduction as possible, and getting 20 from that is really good. After that, I like to go into 
I like to rush a soul eater right away. More pen, more penetration, more, more cooldown reduction, life steal, and a lot of um, an ability life steal as well. You gain some more power at full stacks, and you heal yourself with your abilities too, which is very nice with her because she is very ability focused. Having a soul leader. Is really These good. So let me get the flag stats on this. Boop. And now my item has 35 power, 15% life steal, and you're healing for 20% of the damage dealt to targets. Very nice, and it's a pretty cheap item too. It's not too expensive. After that, I tend to go for a crusher. Unless I really need anti-healing, then I go then I go brawlers, but I go for a crusher here. Free damage, some more attack speed, speed so you can get so autos. And your autos hit decently hard, so having them come out a little faster is nice. But you're mostly doing that for the passive of it. You're getting extra damage on your physical abilities. 15% of your physical power, which is pretty nice even at this stage when you have those items. Next... It depends. Um, it depends on if you need anti-healing or not. If you need anti-healing, Brawlers is very good. Nice, solid item. If you don't need anti-healing, I like to go for Titan's Bane. You get some nice extra stuff with that. I sense countless souls claimed by this edge. And right here, you're at your, so you're at your cap too. So maybe you might not want. I mean, I've been using it, but I might be have been over capping on my penetration a bit. Now that I just noticed, derp on the next item. But I either go Titan's Bane or Brawlers. We'll just go Brawlers this time for that. Me to my thoughts. And then, because Titan's Bane also, you know, adds that your your first ability gains extra 20% penetration, and that overcaps. So you could gain a 60% penetration on your first ability cast, which is very nice. And then last, I like to go... I like to go full power with her. I go full, uh, Heart Seeker. If you go Heart Titan's Bane, you kind of overcap a little bit edge. on your penetration. Yeah, 50 over instead of 40. 40, which is an overcap. <laughs> but I think it doesn't matter if you're using um, um, 10, 10, 10. If you're using um, brawlers, you're not overcapping. You only have 30% penetration. But with this, your first ability is going to have 60%. So you're not overcapping too much, so you can get away with it. I just like um, Heart Seeker a lot on her because it does really good damage. Um, your abilities gain extra damage as you have more um, power, which is nice. Additional 3%. Very nice. I like this a lot on her. This is the build I've been using. You can do a lot of damage. Let's see. So right now, the combo I like to do is... Let's see. <laughs> you do a lot of damage. I could not really do a good number count, but... Even just with the normal combo, which I like to do. This is like the normal thing I like to do against enemies. And that's usually enough to kill. Even just the slashing, the slashing dash does enough to kill. You can hit twice within. That's what I like to do with it too. You want to go through and hit. Then turn because so you can get double hits on that, which is very nice and it racks up the damage. And then, Eve, you can go right through a wall of enemies, go into the target you want to go for, 
Like even if the like you know the support is in front of your squishy um, target you want, you can just dash right through them, hit them, and then turn invisible on the target that's left and run away. Very nice. She is a very fun god. I've been enjoying her immensely in the PTS. Um, hopefully, I'm gonna. My plan right now is to try to max her, get her to diamond as fast as possible. I haven't been this excited for a god in a very long time. But yeah, that's that. That was the game. That was the video. I mean, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna try to get some more um, videos out eventually, especially once she's actually out. Get some gameplay with that on my road to getting her to diamond. I'm also going to be trying to stream some more. Um, video link will be in the description below. Um, it's still work. I haven't streamed in like before yesterday in like seven years. But I definitely would like to do it more. I think it could be very fun to do. Um, to have some different ideas on that. It's just gonna it's gonna be off and on from that for now until I get a really good setup or whatnot going. Anyway. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Watch, um, like and follow me here, like you always have to ask. And check out my Twitch channel when I'm streaming. And yeah, thank you again for watching this video, and I'll, and I'll see you next time. Take care.